disclaimer. At this time, we are now about to venture into the encampment of the enemy to show its goings and movements and the thoughts and feelings which exist within its domain. Please take note that the things you may hear may offend you and may sound disturbing. The images and words that you will hear is the closest rendering and closest account that I can give to the coherency of the mind. Yet, please understand that it is more terrifying and more disastrous than words and pictures can ever convey. convey. As I moved towards the encampment of the enemy, I understood why this encampment had to be extirpated from the high heavens because it has no enjoyment therein. For outside of the physical body, the carnal mind is wide open without this apparatus to move in a deceitful and disguised manner. Therefore, the evil is hostile, moving in a sweeping manner as storms of tornadoes which possess a psychotic intelligence to cause pain to Yahweh. Since Yahweh is not found here, Hale feels that Yahweh's images, which are mankind, has to suffice. Even this reality in a freed carnal mind. I say this because Hale is the carnal mind without the physical body. In this reality, even the thoughts that live here who understand that they cannot hurt Yahweh, this knowledge causes them to rage even greater to infinite levels towards the images and likenesses of Yahweh. While traveling to this state, I was met by unexplainable fear that cannot be expressed on earth. On earth. On earth. On earth. The fear was alive and was made of dead yet moving words. And these words I cannot form my mouth to utter its sayings. All I can say is, on my way there, fear spoke words that have the guise of one saying, I am going to get you severely. And even though you don't see the creatures, you know that they are coming for you. The atmosphere is cold with darkness, and it is freezing with burning fire. Out of the darkness, there was a reaching, a grabbing, and a snatching sensation without hands. Even though I was with angels, I still feared in this place, and would often think Yahweh would change his mind and leave me here. I understood that I only felt this way because my past sins went ahead of me. In the state gathering all the demons and angels to devour me, saying words similar to, Hey, he is here. Kill him and rip him apart. However, even these words would seem to fade away into nothing. Into nothing. Compared to the words that I truly heard here in a state of being, this place, or rather self placing wants everyone dearly. I knew in my being of beings that the state survives off our screams in despair. You will understand further about our sins as we progressively move forward to the section of the front gates. The front gates of the carnal mind are terribly vicious, with baking metal. And the baking metal is all the sins of those of the race of mankind who ever walked the earth. Angels at times call us earth walkers, for there are some humans who never walk the earth due to the sins of man. You must understand what sin is before we move further, move further, move further. Sin is not just bad in the sense that the world views it, where it is erroneously viewed as Yahweh as a strict being who made up rules to control people. This is a lie from Satan. Sin is evil. It is evil. It is tremendously evil because it is not the nature of God. It has nothing to do with his image, which is his word, who is Yahshua the Messiah. Sin belongs to another image, a pseudo false self, worm like in appearance, which presented itself from the devil's center as a newborn son of his to mock Yahweh's image. This was done to challenge Yahweh's authority, to 
to insinuate that his image of mankind is better than that of Yahweh's own image. Satan wanted to prove that the children of man would love his image more than Yahweh's original form. Vision form, vision form. Now back to the gates. These gates have terrible channel settings with generic stones embedded within. These stones have everyone's name written thereon. Romans 3 and 23. And the stones are personalities from the image of Satan. The names on the stones are written with liquid ink of sadness that is unexplainable, with a substance likened unto liquid grief of melancholy, now held up by minerals of regret and lamentations, which are made out of despicableness. Spickleness. Spickleness. So foul was these stones that have names of human beings written on them. Satan tried to decipher our names at the creation of the human mind. Not our spiritual names, Revelation 2 and 17, but our physical names. And sought to change some of our names to connect us negatively to the stellar system of the quantum world. To hydrohead our journey towards the heavens. This is where Satan took some of our names and manipulated them further. Quick note, if your physical name has a meaning that is not connected to Yahweh in some shape and form, then you are extremely powerful in connection to Yahweh's kingdom. And Satan saw this and sought to suppress your movements here on earth from going to Yahweh. Break out of your false name and zodiacal pool by going to Yash. Yash. Therefore, Satan created false fates for all humans in the planetary apparatuses in the stars by intellectual sabotaging, by manipulating the forbidden arts of astronomy and astrology. Fates that would cause the human creature to perish with him in the abyss as to not inherit the ranks of glory that the fallen thoughts forfeited for a life of misery. In truth, all men are destined to live with Yahweh. Yahweh created man for his servitude, which is our joy. Satan tricked man to think that he can live his own life. However, there is no such thing as his own life. Man was not born for himself, but was born to serve Yahweh. There is only in reality two lives to live, that which is of eternal nature, the order of Yahweh, or that which is of the devil, where mankind has been deceived to believe that it is his own self. These understandings are at the front gate of hell, at the front gate of the carnal mind. The Dorellas of hell are extremely intellectually suffering for eternity with this knowledge without a chance to put it in its proper operation. To move a few steps back, on the way to this place I was trying to use cunningness to convince the angels not to take me here. I will not speak to you all that was said because I do not want to be responsible for corrupting anyone. All that should be known is that the words I spoke were very intellectually powerful in the realm of convincing that could persuade most people on earth. I was taught that these words were that of witchcraft and are used for earthly laws, earthly sales, and diver earthly businesses on a physical plane. The angels saw this instantaneously and shut me down with the suffering of Yash. Take note, when they did this, two options appeared at the same time. The first option was extreme wrath of great anger that is so extreme that the human mind dies in its operational function and behaves in a way that no words can describe. The second option was the suffering of the word, the image of Yahweh, for the loss that can take place in the power of potentiality that was created only for the expression of the free will, which I will not speak about here. The angels chose to use the suffering of Yahshua on me, 
this was not to spare me of any pain, for both options are equal in power and scale. They did this because they knew my being and how I felt about Yahweh. And they knew that this will appeal to my essence. I would not speak here about the experience of this, but I would move back to the gates of hell. I did not see this as an out-of-body experience or an NDE. Be that as it may, I was still connected to my physical temple, Satan's bride, which I have chosen to give to Yahshua. And Yahweh honored Yahshua's prayer in John 17 and 15 and brought this scripture to my remembrance that fulfilled John 14 and 26 and made me a witness in the heavenly court of law, law. Furthermore, I did not see this all at one time. Nevertheless, it was laid before me in increments to be able to comprehend every detail that only I can show, which was given to me to report. This is what I am writing to you now. Every human has been given from Yahweh at their creation an aspect of Yahweh that if chosen will be experienced by him or her for the advancement of his kingdom. Every man and woman is very important and it does not matter about their physical status thus stare at us in the world, in the world, in the world. Now back to the gates of hell or the carnal mind. The angels showed me channel settings that were empty. The stones that had the names of humans written thereon were removed. Nevertheless, the channel settings were still there smoking. The smoke was the anguish, and one of the channel settings were pointed out specifically to me it was the place of my name. Even though I was relieved that my name was removed, I still wanted my channel settings to be removed very much. Fearfully so. Fearfully so. With this being said, I reasoned with angels, powerful thoughts of the heavens to discover how these settings can be removed. We found no way to remove it. At this time, the knowledge and understanding of how sin operates came to me. Here is the understanding of when the man or woman sins. When a man or woman sins, it is permanent. That person has forever disrupted a heavenly principle that belongs to the image of Yahweh and has automatically doomed itself to hell without any chance of repair. For you, old man, is an heir to Yahweh, and he gave you the keys of the kingdoms of the heavens. Therefore, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in the heavens. Matthew 16 and 19. Remember, Yahweh is eternal. And what he established through his images and likeness are also eternal. And the heavens and the earth are not separated, but are very much connected. If one would just take the time to read the forgotten books of Eden, Eden, the book of Adam and Eve, chapter 13, 1 through 9, one would see why this covenant that Yahweh made with us was spectacular, full of mercy and love, one of the greatest things that could ever come into the universe. Yahweh, the supreme glorious one who is without corruption, only moved himself no more than three times in the whole universe, which could be likened to three steps, corresponding to the majesty of the Godhead. This is clearly seen in the Bible and was given to a man named Jacob Boom to speak it. The first movement of my father was by Yahshua the Word creating his thoughts, which are the angels, and through them created the heavens and the earth. The second movement was becoming man and battle Satan's rogue army as a saving warrior creating the only active way for man to show the father we love him and choose to come back to our former place. These two movements have already happened. The third movement is happening right now as we speak. This movement is the super judgment day where the thrones will be revealed and the eternal separation begins. Oh, please listen carefully to the breaking of these next words. Words. Here is what Yahweh Elohim has done for us. 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 
Yahweh from the beginning of creation, specifically just for us, searched himself in his wisdom diligently, diligently to establish a righteous path of redemption for us, to reconcile and justify us to himself without superseding his justice or contradicting his law. Romans 5 and 1, 2 Corinthians 5 and 18, Colossians 1, 19 through 20. For the law has to stand victorious over all, victorious over all, victorious over all. Victorious over all. It is the essence of his unchangeable being, the power of eternal order. Love and justice do not outweigh each other. They are both equally balanced in each other, inexplicably, inexplicably. Yahweh, your creator, have more attributes than just divine love, per contra. He has nine divine attributes, yet as of now, we will mark out only two of them to cause point in perception. From his divine love, the feeling is produced in his center that does not want to lose any of his images and likenesses for all eternity. 2 Peter 3 and 9 So he quietly, in the light, without Satan knowing this, took his own form and clothed it with human flesh. His own sawdust produced by his word when creating the spiritual worlds. Then he came into the physical earth to walk in the only real realm of the space-time continuum as Yahshua the Messiah, the Messiah to live the law of Yahweh, thus creating a beam of light from earth to heaven for all his children to return back to him exonerated and freed from the senses of justice which we will speak about here. Yahshua, Yahshua with the sword of truth to battle every aspect of human existence totally destroying Satan's kingdom and conquering victoriously on earth and the heavens, making a safe passage back to Yahweh himself. In order to maintain equilibrium between love and justice, Yahweh in his divine wisdom had to appease justice by arbitrating that mankind participate in the victory of Yahshua. Matthew 16, 24, 26, John 14 and 15. Thus, creating a work for mankind that will be exhibiting love back to the kingdom as a loyal prince by a display of homage, worship, and gratitude that could satisfy his justice. If there was any other way, Yahweh would have made it so. When one forfeits this merciful gift, or if this is taken lightly, it would create a condition worse than any condition that ever existed in times past. Matthew 10, 15. Yahweh, when creating anything out of his spoken word, is an immovable, permanent, fixed doing and is stored in the universal collective consciousness forever. Yahweh's speaking and movements are shown in space, time, and eternity. Romans 1 and 20. So it is when a man speaks and does. For when a man speaks and does, it is stored in this realm and the heavens. As a consequence, once deposited in the collective consciousness, every human being has access to the thing. This is why our sins at times still tempt us to return back to their doings as a creation from our center. Like children who miss their mother, for we did help birth them into reality from the devil's center by committing adultery with the devil. We give permission to Satan to put his part of shame inside of our female parts, our passive principle. Even though we choose to follow Yahshua, which exonerates us from our sinful creation, 
Zen will always sing to us until Yahweh finish taking his third and final step and absorb death, which is sin, and hell, which is the carnal mind, back into his fiery center, that of the first principle, who is Yahweh, the Father, the first distinct person of the Godhead. For everything originates out of the fire of the first principle called the Father, called the Father. out of the divine source of a spectacular life-powered engine. And in this sense, Yahweh can say, I create good and the evil. Isaiah 45 and 7, which is a very hard scripture until Yahshua, the word and interpreter, vouchsafed this to us. Equally important to remember, Yahweh placed all things from the fiery world into the light world, the kingdoms of the heavens. Yahweh rests everything in peace and love, which contains all felicity, jubilation, exuberation, joviality, elations, delectations, and geniality. This last movement from Yahweh will remove death and hell, or sin in the carnal mind, out of sight of reality yet still existing in the never-ending internal power of the lake of fire. Revelation 20, 14 through 15, the new heavens with its spiritual corresponding new earth shall emerge. Revelation 21, 1 through 2, the carnal mind and that which is physical with its corresponding flesh and blood will be gone forever, not annihilated, but vanished from reality, reality. 1 Corinthians 15 and 50.